Okay, hi Susan. I'm so excited to be here helping you. This is, you are so humbled to be willing to let me come and visit and help you organize. Um, so I want to talk to you about talking to your home and kind of saying hello to your home. So what I want you to do is just kind of put your hand on your home and ask your home how it's doing and tell your home who you are and and ask your home what its name is and what it needs. And then I'm also going to introduce myself to your home and just kind of feel how how your home is doing and you know, this is just kind of a fun little exercise. And then we're going to talk about like the four steps to get organized. And so do you want to go say hello to your home? Yeah. How, how did you, did your home talk to you? Yeah, yeah. It was a, even a little bit more emotional than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So, um, and of course I probably had the same reaction as other people. That I was like, mm, I'm going to talk to my home. I don't think I want to do this. That's, I know. That's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so my home, I wanted to be, I wanted to, I'm kind of a funny person and I wanted to be like, oh, I, I wanted to think of a nickname that was funny for him. Mm -hmm. Um, and I said him because I wanted to call him like Ralph or something kind of funny, you know, <laughs> yeah. but no, the name that came to me and it's still kind of a funny name is Peter, but, um, but to me, my home has a lot of strength. Mm -hmm. And you can see it in the construction of the home. Um, it really is a, a bigger home. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look like that. We kind of planned it like that, but um, it's it's a big home. My mother-in-law lives here. We had to get a bigger home, um, in, in so that we could house her. Um, we built it so that we could have enough space for her, so that she could be on the main level and not down in a basement. Mm -hmm. You know, so that she wouldn't have to go up and downstairs. And stuff, awesome. but it's a big, strong home, and and I kind of felt that strength in it. But it's a foundational place, and there's a lot of strength here. And I have five boys, yes. and so that made that made sense to me. Awesome, awesome. So Peter, and I think of Peter, the Rock. Mm -hmm. You know, that's Jesus. Kind of came to my mind. Jesus is. I usually wouldn't think of a Peter being a strong person, but that's kind of what came to me. So that's awesome. Okay, well, um, when I I kind of felt your house and I felt like your house felt a little bit nervous with me here mm -hmm. and it was like kind of feeling like insecure like am I lovable enough am I acceptable and I was like are, are you going to be changing me and I was like no you are beautiful strong wonderful and I'm just here to help some of your shelves look more organized and you're just going to feel more confident as a home. There's power in the pen to transform your house into a home. And you have the Organize Your Joy workbook, mm -hmm. Mom's Complete Organizing Guide. So that's my book. Do you want to? So I brought some copies. So if you want to give your buddy a book, you know, then she can. So I have two books, Discover Your Joy, the self-care journal. But this isn't what we're really using. Um, this is the Organize Your Joy Workbook. Organize Your Joy Workbook, this book, you do not have to read this book cover to cover for you to get the value out of the book. You just fill out, you know, the pages that you need to help you and, you know, people don't have tons of time to read. So you can just kind of, the first chapter is on self-care, the second chapter is on organizing, and the third chapter is on training your children, okay. training your team. Mm -hmm. So you can focus mostly on chapter two mm -hmm. and just really, you know, figure out, okay, what are the eight organizing principles? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can give this book to your buddy. I have another book because I think you might have two buddies, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so just use a pencil because, I mean, these books are cheap. You could get more books for, you know, just fill it out. And there's also extra copies in the back. So if you feel like I can't fill out the book, then you can make copies from the back. Mm -hmm. And you can, I really want you to fill out the book because that's how your home is gonna change and you'll create a better system. So the thinking phase is 80% of the work and the action phase is 20% of the work. So what happens usually most of the time is people get frustrated and they just start like, you know, shuffling things and they didn't go through the thinking steps. And so I'm going to teach you the thinking steps. 
So one of the most powerful things is to get a buddy. And this is going to help you because you're trying to get four rooms organized in four weeks. Mm -hmm. And so having a buddy um, is just such a fantastic um, way to motivate yourself. Because, you know, I always say moms are the good Samaritan queens. And they're always sacrificing their wishes for the family team, for their, you know, everybody, their job, their church, their everything. But getting your house organized is a worthy goal. And your family even will help you, and your friends will help support you. So, um, so do you have a buddy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, and like the buddy, um, I kind of told you about the sandbox method. Can you explain the sandbox method? And so I'm not really sure. <laughs> Actually, you'll have to re. Okay. So, so it's kind of like when you have two little kids in the sandbox where they're working together mm -hmm. and they kind of start collaborating. Like and I can spend an tunnel. hour here and then an hour at their house. Is that right? Yeah. You're helping them and then yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Is and that all there is to it? I wasn't really. Yeah. Sure I mean, there was more. so just like kids in a sandbox are, you know, they're building a tunnel and then the other person's like, oh, we could build a castle. And then, oh, and I can build a tunnel to your castle. And mm -hmm. that's what and you just come up with ideas when you work with a person, mm -hmm. you know, and so you, that, what, that's what you'll do is one week you'll work at their house for an hour or two max. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be like so much time that you just think, oh, I can't do this because yeah, everyone's so busy. So just then the next week they come help you for an hour and you know, when they leave, it will just keep you'll just keep working because you're like, we got started. I know which direction I'm going. If you have any questions, you can call your buddy. I want people to keep being able to organize each other, even without a teacher, you know, because mm -hmm. that's the, that's the, the power of this system. So you know, we have to figure out what's your why, why do you want to get organized? Um, you have to have a pretty big why because habits are kind of hard to change and and it takes some initial like just to start something takes a lot of effort but then once you get the ball rolling and it's easier so do you have an idea of what your why why you want to get organized so um my why is to have a haven for my children so that when they come home they want to be here and that it is a place where they have foundational habits as well for their future family mm -hmm. but I really want it to be just a place where we all just feel at peace including me because I feel like um, a lot of times that stress from not feeling good in, in um, the way I'm feeling with a dirty or cluttered home can run off into them and and they'll feel it so just they're dealing with stresses at, at school and with other things and I don't want them to deal with the stress of me constantly being stressed you know because I feel like it it really affects me emotionally mm -hmm. um, when I'm surrounded with um, things that are not the way I want them to be so um, just creating my home as a haven Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I have, I always tell people, let's create a joyful oasis. So it sounds like that's exactly what you're wanting to create. You know, a place for your children and their friends to come. That's such an awesome thing because having, having your children feel like they can come and bring friends to your own home is just such a neat thing, you know, that they can feel safe. They can feel like they're not embarrassed. They're, they're like, there's a place where we can have fun. And that is just awesome. And then you can feel more peace too. And you know, it's, it's fun to feel some control. Like I've been able to organize my house and I actually, now I can paint about 15 hours a week or more. And it was a little bit of a transition for my family to, you know, realize like mom can have a hobby and she doesn't just have to clean all day, you know, mm -hmm. and, but our homes really, we, they can be these places of joy and, and a haven. I think that's awesome. Okay. So when we want to design your plan, so I want to kind of go throughout your house and then we're going to figure out what are four rooms that are the rooms that you want to focus on for the next four weeks. 
because like I have 16 rooms in my house so if I did one room a week it would take me 16 weeks and so you have a really big house but we're not going to worry about you know 16 weeks we're just going to worry about four weeks and then the next month you can decide if you want to have another big organizing month or if you want to create some other memories and then tackle organizing another month if you have you know more projects so um so we're going to count the rooms in your house so just so you kind of know like you know why am i feeling overwhelmed well maybe you have more than 16 rooms i mean you know it's a lot to care for you know everything you own owns a piece of you and so like the average home um i always said the average american home has 20 to 40 thousand objects but actually, I read a book recently and it said the average home has 300,000 objects. Wow. So it's a ton of objects. If everything you own owns a piece of you, it's like, whoa, no wonder I'm overwhelmed because everything I own, I'm supposed to have a place for everything, put everything in its place. You know, I mean, we're juggling a lot of balls, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so we're gonna count the rooms in your house and then we're gonna count how many piles we find. We're not going to touch any piles. We're just going to say, okay, there's a pile by the computer. There's a pile by the kitchen sink or wherever. We're just going to count and just have a number just to kind of give ourselves just a, where we're, so we know where we're at. And then we're, third, we're going to count how many shelves you have. And because I organized this one lady and she had nine people living in a home that had four closets, no garage, a shed, and one shelf in the shed. So I realized we need more shelves because all the closets in the bedrooms had been ripped out. And I was like, this is a problem. We just, we need more shelves. So we put 20 shelves in her shed and we were able to take everything out of her house that wasn't used daily or weekly. Mm -hmm. So we took out like canning, Christmas, camping, um, toys, you know, the toys that went on vacation, we just put all that in the garage, in the shed. Mm -hmm. And it really helped open up her house, you know, to give her space so the house could be, you know, have some breathing room. Because the goal is you want to organize so that your house is 20% empty. 20% empty shelves, empty cupboards, so that if you buy things, there's room for new growth. Like if there's some different hobby that your family's going to partake in, that there's an empty shelf for your family to go for the new dream. So you want to do that. 